prosper. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. No weapon formed against me shall prosper. Hey, say no weapon formed against me shall prosper. 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 Hey, say I win.
to all of you. I just wanted to take time out. I heard the young man said millions didn't make it. Hallelujah. But I was just one of the ones that did. And we're happy this morning. And I wanted to make sure that I got up. I didn't want to mention any names because it was abundance of love shown throughout my stay in Oh, hallelujah, in the hospital. I got cards and flowers and people bringing food and just sitting with me. And I did not want to miss the opportunity to say thank you. Thank you. And I ask you, I don't know what's going on. Hallelujah, Pastor, but God knows. And all I'm asking you, if you would go on this journey with me, help me out every now and then. Hallelujah. I want to say thank you and that I love you. Amen. Amen.
are still in the blessing business. Right now, we're going to solicit special prayers. Sister Hope. Sister Hope is praying for her family. Sister Fee. For her family, all other families. Pray for strength for her cousin, another family member. Brown family, Mother Reed. Amen. Mother Zachary. Yes, ma'am. A granddaughter. going to share something with you. Those uh, who know a little bit about uh, my time here realize that I came from Washington, D.C. And the pastor, I call him Brother Pastor, we share the same father in ministry who ordained me um, is a very, very close personal friend of mine obviously uh, a spiritual mentor of mine and we were sharing this holiday season I texted him just before Christmas and he just responded back on yesterday I'm going to share some of what he what he shared it's going on there in the church that I left before coming here one of the deacons grandson and I'm thinking this is the young man, he may be in middle school, was shot in the head. The same night, a number of another member's son, wife died of a stroke at 41. Brother Pastor's brother-in-law just passed away and a longtime deaconess whose house is right across the street from the church, his home burned down on Christmas morning. The church psalmist, Josh, and a great, great friend of mine and great dude, just lost his manager's job 12 years on last Friday. The pastor himself just got laid off on yesterday. And his grandson and those who were with him all were stricken with COVID right now. We hear it said that we are blessed to be here. We're blessed to go into another. We talk about how we desire to pray for others and we want others to pray for us. And I was just telling my son this morning that we ought not take what we have for granted. Straighten your face, be mindful and prayerful that if God blesses you simply to be here, that that's a blessing indeed. We have folks traveling who didn't make it. Young folks are dying just as fast as old folks. And for the first time in over 50 years, largely due to COVID and other illnesses, the life expectancy in this country has rolled back. We ought not take these times for granted. The devil is real. And he's busy. While we're chilling, he does not sleep, nor does he rest. So 
So I want us to take this opportunity mindfully. And on this first Sunday in the new year, adore God for who he is. Confess our sins in earnest without the pattern of repeating them. Be thankful for everything that he has done for us, how he has kept us, how he has brought us through, and intercede on behalf of somebody besides ourselves. Folks are dealing with depression. They're getting laid off to start the new year, wondering how they're going to make it through. And we ought to make sure that we represent the God that we serve as servants of the Most High. by communing with him in holy prayer. So let us pray. All those who can stand, please stand with me. God, right now in your name, we humbly come before you. Thankful that you've brought us in to see one more year. We pray, oh God, that you would continue to have us focus on you, forgetting those things that are behind. We recognize that as we left 2022, everybody who we love didn't make it into 2023 with us. So God, right now, I ask that you would touch the hearts of the bereaved. Drive the tear from their eyes and let them know they may not understand why. We may still feel the pain and anguish of losing a loved one, but God, we know who's in control. God, have us not as a resolution, but as a promise unto you be better in this new year. Be better followers of you, oh God. Be better congregants to the church, oh God. Be better brothers and sisters to each other, oh God. We thank you right now for healing, touching the body of Sister Katrina and all of those who have been blessed and delivered to come from a dark place physically and mentally and emotionally to grow up in you, God. We lift holy hands and we pray that you extend yours, God, to Deacon Pendergar right now in the name of Jesus as he sits in the hospital. We ask that you bring healing to families. That you bring healing to our kids. That you continue to form a hedge of protection around us. That we may remember that no weapon formed against us shall prosper. Have us live in your word that says you have never seen the righteous forsaken nor his seed begging bread. Let us know that they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength, shall mount up on wings as eagles, shall run and not be weary, shall walk and not faint. God, right now in the name of Jesus, we ask that you would touch, that you would heal, that you would deliver, Lead us down the path of your righteousness. Thank you. 
and give us the unction to stay in the center of your will. Have us always remember, regardless of what's going on in our lives, that you are bigger than our circumstance. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. That even though we may be feeling a pinch or a little pain, that somebody somewhere has it worse than us. Right now, I ask that you heal, that you would touch. Bring the members of my old church crash memorial closer to you and let them know that you're still in charge. That the devil is a liar. And that no devil in hell, regardless of what goes on, will stop us from following you, from growing in you, from touching others in your name, for being good kingdom citizens, and from blessing you. And give me, God, the heart of my pastor, who despite what's going on, texted me back saying, I'm encouraged, all could have been worse, it is he who supplies all my needs. We're thanking you now for all the good things that you will do in our lives on this year. For all the blessings that you will bestow on us on this year the healing that will take place on this year, for the deliverance that will take place on this year. And God, we'll be careful to give you all the honor, all the glory, and all the praise. It's in the name of your son, Jesus Christ, that we pray. We say amen, amen, amen and amen. Best day. 
make it back home. So you have another opportunity. God is about to bust the seams out of this church. And I'm just happy that I'm a part of it. I'm a part of his service. Isn't God a good God? Give him some praise in here. Will you praise him? God bless you. Join, if you will, with me in the book of Philippians. Philippians, the third chapter, 13 through the 14. And if you need prayer, wave, wave, wave your hand. The ministers are coming. They'll pray for you. They will come and anoint you and pray for you. Let the Holy Spirit have his way. Philippians, the third chapter, 13 and 14 verse I read for our message. Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind, and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. We want to speak to you on a subject, a new year. A new year. A new year. If you can call upon your visual biblical imagination through the scriptures of the book of the church of Philippians, there Philippi was there considered to be one of the greatest cities in Europe. There, the city was named after Macedonia, which was the father of Alexander the Great. Philippi, we find, was by all means the point of the view of Little Rome, they could see the city and how it was fastly growing. There we find the Philippian people had an opportunity to evangelize the local church and to see the gospel spread throughout all of the Roman Empire. The Philippian church had the opportunity of not only being a part of the service of the Lord, but there Paul sat in a jail cell and the people of the Philippian church were so gracious and kind to know that the servant of God had been incarcerated for spreading the word. They sent gifts to Paul. In that year, in Paul's life, as he was preparing for trial, knowing that he would eventually die for giving his life for the word of God, Paul wrote spiritual letters, letters of love, letters with warmth and gratitude. He wanted the Philippian church to know that he appreciated their dedication. He appreciated their hard work for all they had did for the law. This year in Paul's life, he wanted them to know that although he was a prisoner, 